Next, I kind of want to focus in on what we need to do for our running parallel, right? Let's say I have a ton of tests and my execution time is like hours long. To be, to be able to shorten that time period, you can run in parallel. You can run all the tests parallelization. Um, now that's dependent on the strength and the power of the machine that's running. But at the end of the day, that's what you want to do if you want to increase your execution time without um, adding extra test agents or et cetera. So let's do that. Let's look at our code right now. Uh, right now our code isn't set up to be able to run parallel. So in test and G, parallelization is pretty simple. Um, to, it's actually pretty simple to set up to run parallel. It's actually pretty simple to set up running parallel. So parallel is basically just an attribute inside the test and G file. So let's say we have, we just write parallel. Um, you can run a couple different ways in test and G. You can run your methods in parallel, your tests in parallel. Uh, you can run your suites, test suites in parallel. Um, it's really dependent on the type of, or your classes in parallel. Um, it's dependent on what your needs are. Today, we're gonna run our methods because we're gonna have a couple methods in our example class that we're gonna run. Um, and then you can also do what's called a thread count. So a thread count basically is telling you, or telling the test and G how many tests that you actually wanna run in parallel. So now, remember you don't wanna, it's all dependent on the machine that it's running on. So you can't run a million of these or all your tests in parallel because your machine will fall down and um, there'll be a lot of timeout issues, right? Because everything will run too slow and the timeouts will be hit. So today we're gonna to do two, cause we're gonna run two tests in parallel, um, but just be aware of that. Don't don't try to go crazy, just find the best way to get to the closest um, as far as like what you can push the limits to. And then I would even suggest moving back one or two threads just so you don't um, always run the line of timing out. So I've simply set that to set. So if I were to run this right now, um, it wouldn't specifically, first of all, we don't have multiple tests. So I'm gonna go in here. Um, I do have a second test here, but that's our failing test from previous runs. So I'm gonna just simply copy this one here and I will, we'll call this uh, two. So we have our test search page and our test search page two. They're doing the exact same thing. Um, so what will happen here is when I try to run this, it's gonna try to run both of those in parallel. And um, we'll see what happens here. It's not set up currently to run in parallel. So that's why. So what happened there is that we ran into a couple problems, right? So one of our tests passed and it just skipped the other. And what happens is that we have uh, multiple tests here, but we don't have our driver set up to be able to run in parallel. So we have to, we have to do this to our driver because um, without being able to do that, without having our driver set up to run in parallel. So basically we need to set it into a thread local. So that way it's isolated to each test. Um, and we're gonna do that right now. So what we need to do is we need to go to base test. Um, and this is where we're initializing our driver. So we're gonna take a look at how we're initializing the driver, right? So at the top, we are doing a web driver um, and then we're just call simply calling it a driver. Uh, we need to modify this a little bit and call it a, a set up a thread local. Oops. And then we'll set that up equal to a new thread local. Um, and now what happened is, happens is our driver is now set up as an isolated thread. So when we set up and run multiple um, tests, each test will have its own isolated thread uh, or local version of a driver. So as you can see, once you do that, you break a couple things, right? So if you um, obviously notice our driver no longer, we aren't able to instantiate our driver anymore down here because basically the call changes slightly. So I always think of this like you're updating something 
your driver basically just needs to be updated to either a driver.get or a driver.set. So to set our um, Chrome driver here, we need to, let's go below it. We need to do a driver.set. And then we're basically going to do what we were equals up here, right? So we'll do um, new Chrome driver, and then we're going to still pass in our Chrome options. Um, so this is basically the new, ver the thread local version of this. Uh, so we don't need that anymore. So we're going to delete that. Uh, and then we'll do the same down here. So this is a little bit different. Um, so we'll do driver.get this time, dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait and then we'll set it at 10 and then our time unit to seconds so again very similar right like we have our manager or we have our all, all we're doing is adding a git so once we have that we can delete the above so we have driver dot git dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait and then we're passing our wait time and setting it to a time unit of seconds um, if we scroll down a little bit, we have a couple more issues here. So we need to, um, one, maximize our window and two, set our URL property. Um, so let's do, let's continue working our way down. So we have driver.get.manage.window.maximize. So again, very similar, right? Uh, all we're doing is adding that get between manage and driver. Now the URL is a little bit differently. So we need to actually do a different call here. So before we could do, hey, driver.get URL, then we pass in the driver. Um, this time we need to do it as driver.get.navigate.2. And then we're gonna grab our prop, our property from our uh, config file, get property, and then URL. So oh, fairly differently, right? So usually in a normal situation, we can call driver.get. Um, this time we need to specify, we need to navigate to this specific URL. So we're gonna get rid of that. As you can see, we have a couple more errors in here from previous uh, methods that we had set up. This is simply that we need to add .get after these because now we're using a local or a thread local version of the driver, so we need to make sure that we are um, passing that in and updating our other instances of our driver. Now I could probably do a some version of thread local where it already returns a thread local dot get um, instead of me going and updating this, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we will not be doing that. Um, so I'm going to save here real quick. Um, now, I'm going to check most of these. So let's remember our base classes where we have our before uh, methods and our after methods. <clears throat> and in our after methods, we do have a close. We need to do driver.get.close. Um, same with the quit, we are calling. Um, so we'll basically, I'm just, again, just going through and updating anywhere where we had the driver before um, so that I can run it in parallel. Now, um, our page objects is obviously a key, right? We have our page objects, where it's gonna be using our driver. Um, so we have a couple functions here that we need to update as well. Obviously, when you're architecting your framework, this is something you'd wanna do early on. Otherwise, updating a previously created framework to run thread local might be a little challenging, unless again, you did the method where you returned the um, thread local dot git. So you don't have to update these to, to get. Um, I think that is it. Let's see here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save all. And what we expect to happen is that we expect both of these to run. Um, so if we go back to our tested G file, we do have parallel methods. Um, they're targeting the example test class. So any methods inside that class should be ran in parallel up to two. Um, so we'll just simply hit run here. And as you can see, what happened there now is that one, our logging is now fixed, right? Our logging was combined before. I don't know if you noticed that, but our Chrome driver was started successfully. It was actually in one line because it was not properly handling it properly. 
Um, but also both of our tests ran individually. So um, that is how you set up parallel testing.